think I'm live? I'm alive. Right, my loves, who can give me a hashtag live in the comments to blow to prove that I am indeed live? My, I had really nice hair this morning and it's gone really flat. Right, who's with me? Please give me names, where you're coming from, how you're feeling. Let's kick this off with a bang. Bang, bang. Okay, close all these messages. Sorry, I'm looking at my screen to make sure I can see me here. It's a little bit in Inception. Oh, I put my cell phone flew in airplane mode. Why would I do that? Why? Tell me why. Right, who have we got? Oh, I can see some familiar profile pictures. Oh, yes. Hi, hi, hi. Right. We're just waiting for this to warm up so I can get you your document. Get the link that you're going to need because this is going to have a lot, a lot of information. Right, in the comments, posted the link to the document that we're going to be going through. Please, uh, can somebody just check that they can open it and uh, it doesn't need to make sense at this stage. Just make sure you can open it and see it. And I've not got crazy settings on there. So, oh, hi, lady. Oh, Michelle's feeling great. Oh, yeah. Hi, baby. Knew it. Knew you would get you feeling good. Okay. I'm just waiting for a confirmation that's openable. And then we'll kick off. Can't believe it's Wednesday already. How quickly are the weeks going? And how annoying. Like, this is obviously very dependent on where you are. So last week. We had quite a lot of sunshine and it was bright and the buds were in the trees and the snowdrops were out and the daffodils were sprouting and it was like, oh, this is amazing. Lockdown's coming to an end. And then this week, it's storms, rain, man. So, right, we can open it. That's happy days. Right, so tonight, um, it was raised by, I think it was Vicky. Oh, Vicky Avery, I think. I can't remember, but it created quite a conversation about you know, feeling flat when we are at certain points on our cycle. Now, it got me kind of thinking, this is a topic that we cover with our clients. Um, and it got me thinking about how to how to explain it to a larger audience um, in a way that makes sense, because it is quite nerdy, and how to apply it to real life. So I've, I've come up with this document, and it is fairly simple to to go through and I'm going to go through the hormonal aspects and I'm going to go through what that means for us in real life and I'm going to caveat certain things so for those of you who are on the coil who are on the pill a lot of this is going to be hard to try and comprehend for your specific circumstances um, and also tying it into the hormonal changes that we have in our 40s and 50s which I did I think it was maybe three weeks ago you know there, there is everybody's going to have different experiences and everybody is going to have a different cycle and everybody is going to have different things that happen to them and how it makes them feel but this is going to be a general overview of principles and stuff principles and stuff so as normal as we go please ask questions in the chat i won't be able to answer specific circumstances about you and your hormones and your cycle um I don't imagine anybody would want me to do that in a public forum, um, but you know, it's there's never a solid answer. There always is a dependency on the individual and where they're at with their health and their um, weight and their cycle. Okay, so when we're talking about our ovarian cycles, we tend to be talking about three separate lots of hormones that are happening within us: estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. They are key sex hormones now not going to really cover off testosterone today we, we all have testosterone we have a lot less testosterone than men um so that's for the purposes of what we're doing today we don't need to, to discuss that so we'll start off with the estrogen which is oe in the uk and e estrogen in uh, the us so estrogen is important for puberty and if you can remember that far back i actually don't remember having a hard time with puberty I don't know. Um, my mum says I was a moody cow, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, needed for puberty. We need it for ovulation, conception, pregnancy, 
and it also impacts us as we go through the years as well. Um, estrogen is one of the things that helps protect uh, reducing bone density. So you'll know from other things that I've said and, and probably from your own reading that as we age our bone density decreases which puts us at risk of um, osteoporosis and also means that as we are aging and we are more likely to have falls because our muscles are weaker then it's low bone density can mean increased risk of breaks and damage and whatnot. And the other positive thing about estrogen is it helps regulate our, our cholesterol levels as well, along with dietary inputs. Okay. You'll all know yourself that at various parts, times of your cycle, there's big dips and peaks in energy levels as well, and estrogen, pl estrogen plays a part in that too. So, um, I put in a couple of like, pro, not pros and cons, it's not pros and cons, but some of the advantages and disadvantages of higher and lower oestrogen. So higher oestrogen increases bone density and that, that's why in conjunction with load bearing exercise with, res, with resistance training, that's why we're getting increased, um, we're protecting against loss of bone density. Um, having a higher oestrogen in our bodies also can reduce the amount of visceral fat that we have. Now, for those of you that have hit the 40s, mid-40s, going into 50s, and are experiencing, you know, fat around your tummy that has never been there before, that is because your estrogen levels are lower. Okay, so we are storing fat in different areas. You may have heard it called the meno middle, which is quite a common term. I find that quite, it's quite a good description. Um, but that's what it is, is because oestrogen is coming down and it means then that fat will store in that area. Um, having higher oestrogen, so when you're younger, can inhibit LPL, so that's lipoprotein lipase, and that's an enzyme that is going to help lower body fat, but body fat cells in the lower part of the body. So if you think about you know, where you might typically have higher body fat, women tend to have it in their hips and their thighs and their bum, that having higher estrogen um, can help reduce, you know, those fat cells from forming in the lower part of the body, which can sometimes equate to cellulite. So it's up, there's a lot of research going into that, but that's what it is coming out as. And having higher estrogen increases fat burn. Yay! So we know when we know also that our metabolism is slowing down as we age, this hormonal part has a direct link into that. You see, so we are, as our estrogen is lowering as we age, our ability to burn fat as quickly and as easily is also lowering. So hence why it might feel harder to lose body fat. The reason for that is because it is, okay? And also from a hunger point of view, for those of you that were talking about how hungry you get at certain parts of your cycle, and I'm going to go through that again later on, um, having higher estrogen helps control hunger. So leptin is a hormone that determines hunger. And if we are having higher estrogen, then our leptin increases so we don't feel as hungry, which is quite good. We quite like that. Um, one like so it sounds like having lots of estrogen is an amazing thing it's brilliant and that's why you know as it declines you notice it so much because all of these benefits these are real benefits to us girls um and you'll really notice when your estrogen levels start declining but having higher estrogen also has a, a flip side where it can you know it can be a inhibit thyroid function which then means you know if you've i don't know if you know anybody or you even have had um underactive thyroid, you'll know that it's much, much harder to, to lose body fat unless it's, your thyroid is regulated by uh, medication. Um, and increased sodium levels. So I'll take you through a wee chart that's going to show this, but basically when we have peaking our estrogen, it means that we retain sodium. When we retain sodium, that shows in our body as water retention. And that then shows, sometimes can be visible as puffiness, but it generally is showing on the scales. You generally see it on the scales when, you know, you'll know yourself potentially that if you've 
you've been trying to lose weight, you've been losing weight fairly consistently, but there's maybe one week out of every month where the scales jump up by two or three pounds and you're like, hmm. I've not really been doing anything different, I'm still exercising, I'm still in a calorie deficit. That tends to be, if you start tracking where your cycle is, it tends to be because of this. And that lower body connective tissue links back to that other piece that I was talking about, about the lower body fat cells. And the cellulite, love the cellulite. Um, okay, so that's some advantages and disadvantages of, of estrogen. We, we all have estrogen as females. Um, some have lower estrogen than others and it all very much depends on your, on your cycle and I'll show you that in a minute. So the other key sex home is, uh, hormone is progesterone and this tends to be all about, you know, sorry I need to move my phone, it's about to slip off. Um, this is all about conception, uh, ovulation conception and embedding in the womb. Um, so progesterone is what helps your, your, the line of your womb thicken basically so that when um, a sperm makes an egg and it fertilizes it pops itself in that wee cozy burrow to nurture and grow for, for nine months. So if there's no pregnancy that happens at that point, um, i.e. there's no fertilized egg, then your progesterone lethal, uh, levels decrease and then you start shedding the lining of your womb. Nice. The joys of us girls, eh? Um, so that's basically your period. Um, so this is where it can be quite tricky for those of you that are on different contraceptions because you might not, it might not be obvious every month by having a period because I know certainly like, I'm in the contraceptive pill, but I have a, we have a forced break for the type of pill that I am on and sometimes the lining of my womb will shed, sometimes it won't. Um, and that is dependent on, can be dependent on you and it can be, sorry, somebody's messaged me can be dependent on the type of contraception as well. Okay, so progesterone can also be known as a sleepy hormone. So you might notice at certain times of your cycle that, you know, you're lacking in energy or you're, you're really tired. But that can also come about from 101 other reasons. So, you know, your nutrition plays a huge part in your tiredness. Uh, how much you're actually getting quality sleep or deep sleep was going to impact how sleepy you are as is you know your hydration levels and activity levels so it's really going to be hard to pinpoint that you are feeling tired today because you've got lower progesterone so it, it can be quite hard to do that um so some advantages well a big advantage of higher progesterone so when you're when you have higher progesterone in your in your body your body temperature naturally increases so you might find that at certain points you're like in, in bed at night you're like a big sweaty mess again that could that's correlation with perimenopause as well that you'll feel that but when you are when your body temperature is raised like that it typically means that your metabolic rate is increased so you're going to feel not only sweatier and hotter but you're going to feel hungrier and that's quite can be quite when you're on, when you're trying to lose body fat, you know that can be a really hard thing to deal with because you might be tracking calories, you might be not, you might be doing, I don't know, sins, whatever it is that you're choosing to do, um, and you get to that certain point, and you're like, it doesn't matter what you put in your body, you don't feel satisfied, you do not feel satisfied, and we've all been there, and that can be to do with the the amount of progesterone going through your system, so. The flip side of that is, is because your metabolic rate is higher, it does actually mean that you are burning more calories than normal. So it can be, you know, when we're working with women, like we are, can be recommending, like depending on, on their start point on where they are and we know what they're like, you know, it could be at that couple of days time, increasing calories by 200, 300 calories a day to stop because, you know, it might, that might put you in a calorie surplus or it might put you at maintenance calories. But if we can, a lot of it is that mental piece where, say if you're you're trying to stitch your calorie number, but you're ravenous and then you cave and you will cave when you're hungry and that's okay, that's normal, you should like eat when you're hungry. Um, but you tend to go overeat and in a binge and then that puts, that ruins the consistency and you get that whole, oh, I've been really bad, oh, well, I'll just put it in the bucket and start again tomorrow and then keep eating. 
it's that then that puts you on that bigger calorie surface so it means it's going to be harder to lose fat so even just increasing calories and having the allowance and giving permission to do that can actually be a really good mindset hack so moving into what it actually means to have the downsides of higher progesterone sorry uh sometimes means that you can't tolerate carbs as well um and that means you know you might experience um mood swings you might experience you know crushing lethargy um because when we have higher progesterone it means that we can sometimes get a little bit of insulin resistance which means that we're not going to be tolerating these carbs as well and you'll notice it but it is short term so and the the long and short of it it's you know deal with it a little bit um when your progesterone levels are higher the hunger hormone so they're not the hunger regulation hormone the hunger hormone increases which is that's called ghrelin and that can mean that your cravings increase so if you've ever got to a certain point in the month then you're just like oh i need salt i need pastry any carbs or any sweetness that tends to be because of the progesterone changes um and talking it linking it back into testosterone so we know we need testosterone to grow and build muscle and help and help our um, tendons and ligaments and whatnot stay strong so higher progesterone can actually inhibit your testosterone a little bit which means that you're not going to get as much muscle growth now for your average women like i would count as your average women none of us are actually bodybuilding training we're not prepping for comps so it shouldn't be that much of a big deal you know most of us are training for aesthetics we're training for health we're training for energy we're training for um headspace so it's not too much of an issue right i'm just going to nip in and check the comments and see If there's anything essential I need to pick up on just now. It never shows me all the comments. I've got like four, but I know there's 29. Okay, sorry ladies, I can't answer your questions because I can't see them. Right, so if you have a wee nosy at this graph thing now, it's not very attractive. <laughs> I didn't have time to create my own one, so I did a copy and paste and then added my own comments. So it's really not that nice. Um, but if you look along the bottom is your cycle in days so day at the very at the very start of the axis like day zero up to maybe day zero to day five that is when a period would typically happen now if you look moving on there so we're going to look at the red line first of all so that's estrogen so if as your estrogen goes up in peaks that's when you will release an egg that's you ovulating so you're going to release an egg and then once you've really said it's going to come crashing back down again and then it starts creeping up again so at this point as your estrogen is going up to that peak of ovulation and then you'll see it's peaking up again maybe at day 20 22 you'll that's when we have other hormones in our body primarily for this instance serotonin and dopamine they increase because there's a direct correlation of increase in them and increase in estrogen so that you start feeling really good so you'll feel really really good on on those days at day 13 14 and at day 20. the downside to that obviously is that when estrogen isn't high it means that your dopamine and serotonin levels are lower which means that you're going to go on a bit of a oh oh my god i hate myself so think at uh, day 16 and day 25 26 dopamine and serotonin lower so you're going in this kind of i'm so happy oh i'm not i'm so happy oh i'm not right so obviously it's not as extreme as that but for those of you that do experience mood swings then you'll know what i'm talking about you know some people don't really experience that they don't it's not noticeably like we all suffer mood swings but how easy is it to pinpoint it all in hormones when you know it could be because like the dogs dug up the garden or the cats got a sore leg which both of those instances are true um so you have to look at the environmental factors as well rather than just going oh it's my hormones because it might be but it might be something else as well 
Okay, so that is the mood swing piece. So the if you look at your progesterone, which is the green part of that graph, you can see that the very peak day 20, day 21, that would be when the egg would be implant, implanting in your uterus. Now, at that point, that is where you're going to be ravenous, starving, all hollow legs, hungry, can't get enough of the food. It's at that point, so maybe day 20, so the day or two before it, that's when you want to be looking at increasing your calories, increasing the food a little bit more. Now, we're not talking about a family pack of Mars bars and a family pack of kettle chips. We're talking about looking at increasing, you know, your good quality carbs. You're increasing your good quality proteins and your good quality fats. We're not going gung-ho into a Domino's as much as you want to. You know, you could. It's up to you. You, you have that choice. Because at this time, our metabolism is higher. Okay, but we also have increased hunger. So use that wisely. Now, the downside of that is that that is going to show on the scales. So even if you eat in a calorie deficit, see, you decide that, you know, I'm actually all right, I am hungrier, but I can ride it through, it's fine. You can weigh yourself then and you'll be like, oh, there's a, I'm heavier on the scales. And that is because the amount of fluid that you're retaining. Now, what we also see at this point, because you're hungrier, because you have more cravings, tends to be like your fatty, carby foods. Now, we also know that when we have more carbs than normal, we're also going to retain more fluid. So if you jump on the scales after having a, you know, a, a crisp binge or a biscuit binge or something or a bread and butter binge, not only are you going to weigh more because of the amount of sodium you have because of these hormonal changes, but you've had more carbs than normal. So you're going to retain more fluid from that point of view. So, you know, what can be really scary is you step on the scales and you're like, boom, five pounds heavier. And all you've had definitely is like an extra 500 calories, right? So scientifically, 500 extra calories is not enough to gain one pound of body fat. So... You need to take a step back and look at it in all seriousness and go, right, okay, what have I actually had? What have I really, really had? And be very honest with yourself because we do tend to fib. Um, is it body fat or is it fluid? You know, and if you get, if you're going back after a couple of days of flushing out your body, having lots of water, five portions of fruit and veg a day, you know, eating a good amount of protein, your weight will settle back down. It will settle back down. So, like the key takeaways here are we all have we all have a cycle whether we have ovaries whether we are postmenopausal we all have a cycle that can mirror a previous ovarian cycle so it's really really quite important that if you are experiencing you know crashing highs and lows if you are experiencing extremes of weight gain if you are experiencing cravings and body temperatures it is really worthwhile taking a some kind of diary or using a hormone tracker online there's loads of apps um and tracking things like your weight tracking things like your mood tracking things like your skin that can be another big one as well and you'll start noticing patterns um you know for example we we are ladies three times a week we don't personally go to their house and weigh them they weigh themselves three times a week and it means that you know after four five six weeks we can start seeing a very distinct pattern of what's happening with our weight um, so it's definitely worthwhile keeping a track of your possible hormone effects. Really is can be really quite advantageous. Um, so there was something else I wanted to add here as well. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So yeah, as I say, you know, this is, everybody is different. This is a very scientific view of what happens at certain points. As we age, we know from um, our previous trainings that the level of oestrogen from about 40 comes down like this and then it tails off. So that has even more of a part to play that you might notice shorter cycles or longer cycles and you might get less periods, you might get heavier periods, you might get longer but not as heavy periods and that again is different for every single woman and again that can be quite important to track that too um, and seeing where you're at 
So I has this helped? Has this helped? Energy levels. So when to optimize your workouts? So one again, this is very this is very individualized. So you know I tend to not change so much in energy levels with the change of my cycle because I'm because I'm on the pill and I feel it's very fairly stable. But paying attention to your body is really really important. So if you are feeling weaker at certain parts of your cycle, don't give yourself permission to just decide to stop exercise because you can't be bothered. You know, it might be useful to maybe deload, so not use as much weight. It might be applicable that you maybe increase long, uh, lighter intensity steady state. So maybe some jogging or some cycling or some swimming in the puddles outside my house. It sounds like it's so heavy with rain. Um, rather than doing higher intensity stuff. You know, our hormones, when we are going through hormonal changes, you know, doing stuff that is far too high intensity for us has actually got a negative impact and can and can actually reduce our metabolism even more. So I think it was Lisa in the chat today was talking about, we we're talking about, you know, let's try a deload week. And some people have, when they look at their cycles, they'll start identifying that maybe every four weeks they notice that they're, they're feeling weaker. You know, that might be time to reduce the weight. Personally, for me, it's every six weeks and that's that's physical, that's muscle fatigue generally that I feel rather than hormonal changes. So every six weeks for me, I will take a deload week. So this week is, is that week and it's I'm tired. I feel my muscles are fatigued. I'm getting about achy. Um, so this week I'm doing more cycling. Um, I'm doing more yoga, I'm doing more technique stuff. I'm still blooming practicing those well, lumen double unders with a skipping rope, which I cannot get, and I've got scars all over my arms from the skipping rope. So for the you, you skippers out there, um, so yeah, it's it's about being in tune with you, um, because there is no right, no wrong answer. Then this is all this is in principle. It, 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 you need to do some work on on your cycles to figure out where everything is going. So has this helped? Let's see the comments. Sorry, that was, I just played myself, playing myself. That was weird. Right, Laura Jane. Oh, I've got some positive feedback. Thank you. Enjoying now, don't I? Okay, so there are 39 comments there. I have got no idea what 37 of them say because I can only see two of them. So um, what I would, would love you to do is to just jot some notes, um, use this document, have a study, see how it applies to you. If you do have any concerns over your hormones and your cycle or where you are with um, perimenopause, then it's, it's worthwhile having a chat with your GP or your um, specialist nurse at your health centre. We have, we have a, a, a female specialist nurse who, who works with us on um, contraception and whatnot. And if you are struggling with, like if you're not getting anywhere with your own healthcare provider and there is some really, really bad stories out there for, about GPs and, and, and practices in the UK, um, would just give me a shout because there's uh, quite a few different resources depending on your circumstances that I can point you towards. So I have had a lovely evening talking to you all again. I don't know what we're doing. Oh, I do know what we're doing next week. I do know what we're doing but next week. But I'm not going to tell you just now because I'm going to wait and see what comes out of the group because I've been getting loads of ideas from things that ladies are posting about. So keep them coming. Keep the chat going. The group is being amazing just now. Um, so for anybody out there who is struggling with fat loss or want to speed up fat loss and want to have consistent fat loss and want to have some parent fat loss, get in touch. You know, I am working with, well, we, Clara is working with a heap of ladies just now in their 40s and their 50s. We have got some amazing results. You know, what we do works, what we do works quickly and what we do works permanently. So get in touch if you want our help. And remember, leave your ego at the door. 
if you've been trying for years or even for months to get things right, you've not been able to, then maybe it's time to ask for some help, ladies. Um, okay, so I'll leave you that. I'm away to um, make some red pesto, which I don't, I don't really know how to make red pesto, but my son, who's nine, advises me that I needed to roast some tomatoes and red pepper, so I have done that this afternoon. I'm just going to go and cook it up just now. All right. Lots of love, ladies. Have a corker of an evening and I'll speak to you all real soon. All right, take care.